So, good afternoon, everybody. Today we are going to discuss about personality development system. What exactly is personality development system? So we all know that we should have an effective personality to work effectively to get a effective results valuable results and which will be useful for our institution so now everybody is asking me why it is we all seen personality development why it is personality development system definitely it is a system which helps everyone to work effectively think effectively perform effectively and execute effectively so today we are going to discuss about what exactly is this personality development system what are the parameters involved in this personality development system and how we have to make use of this personality development system to have an effective personality such that we can bring a valuable results which will be useful for the our institution and is useful for us also now i am mainly concerned with the personality of the doctors the medicos the residents junior residents senior residents who will be working in the hospital and what they have to see while working to overcome their stressful situations time management perception what exactly is perception we all know perception so what if there are again visual perception auditory perception and we'll also discuss about what is a planned behavior planned behavior and we also discuss about the performance management and performance what we call it as appraisal and we will also discuss about what is healthy relationship what is a healthy mind what is a healthy behavior we will also discuss about the leadership qualities what are the leadership qualities a person should have according to me every doctor is a leader that means he ha he has the capability to manage the situation in a particular environment in a particular area for example the person with the mbbs degree who is working in the rural phcs and any other hospital chcs and any other rural centers has to manage more than 2000 to 4000 of the population in some situation it may extend to 10000 of the population so he should know how to manage the situations in there it includes stress management in time management so he should be a leader every doctor should be a leader so that he can handle the stressful situation in the hospital and so many doctors on fail because of the not able to handle the situations not able to handle the environment so this is a concise overview over the personality development system and how we have to implement and it also discuss about interpersonal relationship that means the doctors and the nurses relationship the doctors and the group b relationship doctors and the patients relationship doctors and the patients attendants relationship what are the ex what are exactly you can how exactly you can manage the situation with interpersonal with effective interpersonal relationship so again communication communication is a very important part of management and communicate if you are a really ac effective communicator you can handle the situation very nicely so communication and moreover we are going to discuss about conflict management what exactly is conflict management what are the causes of conflict what are the stages of conflict what are the types of conflict and how we have to manage it it's a very important thing managing the conflict is a very important thing in our life which is needed you can apply it anywhere i'm concerning it only to the hospital you can apply it anywhere okay so again there are how you can manage conflict management styles are there okay that's also we are going to discuss and 
healthy relationship we have discussed what are what are the again what are the stages and what are the types what are the things involved in it okay and personality we all know that and we were discussing about personality also now and again time management strategies what are the man- time management strategies what is four quadrant rule what is 80 by 20 rule so 80 by 20 means doing 20% work and getting 80% result is 20 by 80 rule but we rather do 80% of work and we get 20% of the result because of ineffectiveness so that is very important in management again there are some period four quadrant theory is also there and jerry window model is also there again life position when you go to interpersonal relationship again there are life positions okay again what are the life positions ego states what are the ego states and what is self awareness self management what is situationalism so again emo- what is emotional intelligence so these things should be there for the doctor to work effectively in the hospital you believe it or not if the doctors are aware of these personality development system parameters they can manage the very well in the hospital and you will receive an effective treatment and you will ref- they can perform well and you can receive effective treatment and moreover you can have a very healthy relationship with the doctor and even doctor have, can have a very healthy relationship with the patients and the patient attenders so that they can communicate well they can solve the problems well they can uh, even make the patient more comfortable by explaining the things in a better way by communicating in a better way and awareing of the stages of conflict they can prevent conflicts in the hospital so these are very much needed okay so now we go with the step by step so this is a very brief introduction and i am telling you performance regarding it you have to make the work very simple keep it very simple okay make the work very simple so it it can be understood by everybody so that it is easy for you also and it is easy for the other person who is do- doing also who is supporting also so i always say keep it in keep it simple in the performance management okay so likewise so we'll go in step by step and um, i hope you enjoy the video and this is basically done this video is basically done to strategize to strengthen the time management stress management and other management skills in the doctor this is specially for the doctors i know they are very brilliant they are they know the skills very nice but they are not able to execute it so this is because of the management problems so i i will suggest this video for all the medicos mbbs students bds students mds students md ms students mch students and even dm students so all the students please go through the video please see the what are the strategies you can make to uh, manage the situations in the hospital thank you everybody so we'll go with the uh, with the in the name of lord ganesh we will proceed uh, so we'll see how what are the things we are going to discuss it's just a one hour video it is only just go through the video everything is there in the book just go through the video okay thank you so oh, now basically what is a personality development system so personality development system is basically personality development system is basically deals with the goals and the objectives at the end of the course in the personality development system the mbbs students will be able to learn effective time management in life that is time management strategies improved performance that is keep it simple stress management stress relievers like yoga meditation self motivation much needed for long term eff- effectiveness improved leadership qualities every doctor is a leader communication skills much needed for the doctors and the medicos for handling the situations in the hospital group dynamics yes how to build a group which is the oxygen to run a hospital all effective group effective team is much needed to have work effectively to execute effectively to perform effectively Mant- maintaining healthy mind dealing with the causes of unhealthy mind this is also very important maintaining healthy mind means dealing with the causes of unhealthy mind improving health care that is always health is wealth 
having healthy behavior with the improved habits so what are the habits you have you if you have a healthy habit healthy behavior that in that it leads you to the success healthy mind healthy mind healthy body again you are going you are reaching the success and mainly overcome shyness and failures with improved personality you can overcome shyness and failures we miss lots of opportunity because of shyness and failures remember one thing failures are there to teach us success are there to strengthen us okay so success is there success will be out, out of about 10 failures you may have only one success that is the actual reality finally healthy relationship with the surrounding environment so creating compatible environment how you can create a compatible environment that is also very important compatible environment compatible people that is also very important so now the skills so basically personality development system aims in explaining in uh, the usp of the personality development system is choosing success by having effective personality choosing success by having effective personality i repeat the usp of the personality development system is choosing success by having effective personality definitely this subject is different in all aspects starting from the contents as this subject gives a detailed information about all the parameters needed for effective personality and this subject contains personality development training guide as the second chapter which will train the students to improve their personality and achieve and maintain their success of life this subject is mainly teaches us to have more and more positive perception to have effective and a happy life eventually takes us towards success i repeat this is very very important point this subject teaches mainly teaches us to have a more and more positive perceptions to have effective and a happy life eventually that takes to us towards the success this subject helps students to orient plan organize execute and achieve success this subject is also aimed at improving working efficiency of the employee administration finally improving the productiveness of the institution so i repeat this is a very important point this subject is also aimed at improving the working efficiency of the employee as well as the administrator and finally improving the productiveness of the institution this subject mainly helps a student to identify their goals in life to work and plan forward to achieve their goals this subject uh, who chose to read this subject means they have chosen success in their life this also helps students to have a healthy control of stressed mind therefore resulting in improved personality compatible environment finally achieving the success this is a very important thing you have to remember it so now we are going with one of the parameters of perception what are these parameters which are involved in perception so mainly basically what is a perception perception refers to the interpretation of what we take in through our senses repeat i repeat perception refers to the interpretation of what we take in through the senses in terms of optical illusion this means our eyes so i already told you it is optical visual perception auditory perception and there are other senses through our senses what are the perception we are taking in those are called as perception very simple through our senses we have senses so many senses so through the senses what are the things we are taking in are called as perception it's a very simple concept so i also i i at this state i want to uh, admit that so we have a cell which has a cell membrane which is a selectively permeable it is selectively permeable but we should have a, a line or an uh, a coat in our head or the brain such that we will take only positive perception we are not going to think negative there is no negative thought in my mind i will think only positive only positive mind that is called as positive perception that's what we should have so that we can receive achieve the success so positive perception means positive thought positive thinking and positive working 
that is called as positive assumption so simply put all our brains are trickled in uh, into seeing something which may or may not be real also so perception with the perception you can become mad also so that's what they're trying to say so only there are some illusions delusions again it's again completely going to psychiatry but i'm not going to anything in detail about psychiatry i just want you to say or you to think positive say positive hear positive don't hear negative things and don't see the poor negative things only perceive the positive things positive perception positive thinking positive thoughts and positive working that leads you to the success okay the factors that influence perception are the object of perception some things in our environment tend to attract attention back so those that that is again uh, so some things in our environment tend to attract attention okay background and surroundings means in our surroundings at the moment of perception will affect our perception again our surroundings all will also affect the perception okay and the perceiver we each bring unique experiences and personal points of view to each situation that is also very important we each bring unique experiences and personal points of view to each situation that's what is a perceiver okay so here again role models whoever will be speaking about some their experiences they are all we perceive it that perceive that in a pos positive way even they explain it in a positive way so that is all called as positive perception in order to make make sense of our world our brain try to see patterns and shapes that are recognizable this principle is called grouping yes this is very important see in order to make sense of the world well whatever is there whatever happening in the world we have to make some sense of it our brain try to see the patterns of the shapes it creates its own patterns and shapes that may or may not be present but they are and recognizable that are recognizable and this principle is called as grouping so very simple so you should remember two things there are some patterns our brain senses some of the things in our environment which may or may not exist but it creates one shape of it so that is that are which are recognizable which are recognizable that is called as grouping okay that's what is very important perception i am telling you this is a very important thing only remember if you don't understand anything remember take it everything in a positive way positive mind positive thought positive working that tells you a lot okay and yes the mind form shapes that do not exist okay i have pictures i can show you but uh, in the bet better in the next uh, video and again there are some um, uh, images uh, i can show you in the next uh, video which explains there are embedded images in some images okay okay that i can explain you in a better better in the next video and again uh, there is one chart which explains the color color of the for example it, the word is written yellow but it is written in a green color so we have to read through this chart such that i can explain it better in the next video it is just to strengthen or sharpen our mind okay these exercises are mainly to strengthen or sharpen our exercises okay and this whatever we call it as jadus and uh, magics they are all based on our perception okay and again yes surrounding environment i have some other pictures i can show you next video but basically what i'm trying to say however you think you perceive it in a different way okay yes so mainly here so whatever you are seeing whatever you are doing so you should be your mind should be sharp enough to grasp the wrong things and ignore it and grasp the positive things and take along with you that's it every person believe it or not i am telling you to be very frank every person has a positive side every person has a positive thing which you can take from him and you can move forward so that's what i am trying to explain so managing stress so we know stress in so become familiar with the symptoms what are symptoms and determine levels of stress and understand the causes of stress coping mechanism better sometimes when you are too much stress it is better you use the coping mechanism to alleviate the stress that is also very important stress and its effect so uh yeah what well, is for the first main three main questions you should uh, have in your uh, this one is 
do you personally suffer from excessive stress yes or no you answer it what are the signs of excessive stress what uh, what you can um, y- what can you do to help alleviate uh, your stress okay so these are the me three basic questions so the uh, yeah common symptoms see very simple i will explain it in a very simple way common physical symptoms of stress are rapid heartbeat okay headache stiff neck tight shoulders back ache rapid breathing sweating sweaty palms upset am upset stomach nausea diarrhea sleep trouble <coughs> weakening of the immune system weakening of the immune system so basically there are three steps you have to remember it so first is rapid heartbeat headache stiff neck tight shoulders back ache rapid breathing sweating sweaty palms upset stomach nausea diarrhea sleep trouble and weakening of the immune system that is also very important the common mental symptoms of stress include irritability intolerance short temper exhaustion lack of concentration frustration over minor challenges frustration over minor challenges that is very important i repeat mental irritability they get irritated to very minor things also intolerance the tolerance level is very less short temper people exhaustion okay they and there is no as if there is no energy they behave like as if there is no energy exhaustion that's called exhaustion lack of concentration they are not able to concentrate over anything frustration over the minor challenges so these are the symptoms of the stress so there is again one chart which can again uh, help you to assess what are the st- uh, how you yourself can assess in which stage of the stress you are and uh, which will help you to overcome your stress that we'll discuss in next uh, video better mm, some i'm not showing any diagrams in this video but i just want to go through what exactly is the personality development system yes so how you can uh, if you determine that you are experiencing stress or uh, excessive stress what you can do so find out what is causing stress in your life and determine the ways to reduce or eliminate the cause change your response to the stress by using old and new coping mechanism mainly old and new coping mechanism old means earlier i used to do this for this situation now i also i will do this better it works out works out new means earlier i was doing this it was not working out now i am doing this so these are the old and new coping mechanisms okay respond to stress by using old and new coping mechanism early uh, learn healthy ways to prevent stress reduce its harmful effects okay that is again causes means being fired being promoted or demoted moving relocation marriage divorce pregnancy death of family or friends so these are all those uh, uh, things which can lead you to stress major causes of stress for university students so mainly adjustments to your daily or routine sleeping or eating habits and uh, you are away from the home okay that also can cause time management due to additional academic workloads i'm missing your social support network your especially for the students is basic basically very important missing your social support network for the, from the friends and family will be the major problem for you to your stress so you have to work on it learning new invest navigation such as getting around campus living on your own choosing your own classes i mean classes and uh, choosing new friends choosing new life directions uh, career path of you for your future so first you have to remember where does you have to question yourself where does the stress start from the family from this uh, college from the friends from the work where exactly so that you have to point it out so now time management so how you can cope up with the stress means so basically time management can huge cause of stress in many people's life personality development system now on how to a better manage your time and task it is there we'll discuss later schedule you may get more uh, done with a less stress okay met more so again in the stress also there are two types of stress okay that's also you have to remember one is use stress and de stress use stress is very important i mean use use is a positive stress useful stress stress which can help you uh, in uh, handling uh, okay uh, use stress and uh, 
distress. You stress will help you in handling some of the stressful situations. I mean, uh, stressful in the rather stressful. It is uh, a good stress. Means uh, you are doing some work. For example, in something you are doing for some program, all are relaxed. Working is going very slowly. Suddenly, head comes. He starts uh, scolding everyone who is not doing work. Now the stress has arrived with everyone. Everyone is doing work, and with O oh, is doing very fast. So then, that is you stress, and de-stress means again even when the stress level reaches more, it becomes de-stress, and which will decrease the working efficiency of the students. So again, I will repeat: there are two types of stress: you stress, de-stress. You stress is very helpful. But distress is not helpful uh, um, in managing the situations. Take a so you may get uh, more done with the less stress if you make a schedule. Think about which things are most important and put those on at the top of your schedule and list to do uh, things first. Take good care of yourself. Exercise. Get plenty of rest. Try to eat well. Don't smoke. Limit how much alcohol you can drink. So these are. Uh, some personality uh, related and uh, behavior related changes exercise yeah, yeah regularly if you are young enough regularly exercise if you are old enough at least do walking plenty of rest or eat well okay don't smoke and limit alcohol that's what you're trying to say yes yeah, stop negative thoughts easier said than done right so well it is skill that uh, would be beneficial to develop and uh, try writing down uh, your worries Uh, work on getting or go uh, letting go of the things you cannot change. Okay, uh, don't worry about your things that have passed. Focus on the positives, the failure that you can still impact. Okay, I repeat. So stop negative thoughts. That means easier said uh, than done right. Okay. Uh, well, it is a skill that uh, would be beneficial to develop. try writing down your worries work on letting go of things you cannot change don't worry about the things that you have passed focus on the positives and the future that you can still impact speak up it is called as assertive communication and can help you express how you well how you feel in the thoughtful and tactile way assertive communication just to think the uh, speak about the positive things you whatever you are speaking with some person speak only positive things positive things about him when you are discussing about him someone for some other person only discuss the positive things when you are discussing about yourself again discuss the positive things this is that is called as assertive communication remember if you on talk to anyone if you are uh, not um, communicating with them in anyone that will lead, that itself can lead you to the stress so better to do a assertive communication ask for help people who have strong network of family and friends manage the stress better so those with the family and friends support who have can manage stress better do something you enjoy or as like for or like an hobby like um, meditation walking singing and listening to the music okay these are very good exercises believe it or not and this is one of the i already told you meditation that to listening to music and singing music and uh, 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 musical instrument playing the musical instruments these are all the very good relaxation exercises you believe it or not that will definitely help you in emptying your mind so you can, so that you can perform well and you work well okay basically you work well so keep a journal that try including dates time date of time and year of current events in your life and even the food uh, intake and exercise routine everything so that means uh, whatever the good thing happened in your life better you uh, write it in some paper for example on one day i visited that temple and i have donated that much amount on one day i have donated this blood and on that day i have donated uh, that much money to some person so for his uh, health check up Oh, uh, on the on one day, I have done this good thing. So write down whatever you have done good things. You write down, and when you are really stressed out, you just read those the those things. Uh, remember those things. Try to recall those things, and believe it. I'm telling you very frankly. First thing we should have in our mind is 
I have done a good thing, so never can happen. Never, nothing bad can happen to me. Any time, any point of my life, nothing bad can happen to me. I have done a good thing. I have. I am doing good thing. I have not any harm. I have not done any harm. So definitely, good thing will happen to me. That is the confident you should have. That is the uh, confident level you should have. So first basic confident level where you will get when you do the good things. positive things positive thinking positive working i always i keep on telling <coughs> the confidence is very important in um, successful life so this con- that confidence you will gain only by doing the positive things positive thought positive thinking positive working and positive creating a positive environment so and that is also very important and um, focus on the present again uh, forget the past focus on the present try meditation imaginary imagery exercise there are there self hypnosis again um, so you that means uh, focus on the present means so you better focus on the for example uh, now you are in the first year mbbs for your focus first should be i have to pass the first year mbbs with a distinction if you are good enough or at least with the first class that should be your focus and you should do it okay don't keep thinking back to your mistakes are uh, relieving the negative things uh, that happened and there is nothing you can do about it let it go and look ahead not behind so always look ahead laugh it up again so laughing is a very good we believe it or not laughing is a very good exercise i always prefer uh, the people at least per day at least half an hour you laugh you see some comedy uh, videos some comedy things you laugh whatever may be your stress whatever may be your stress level laugh at least half an hour you go to some comedy shows or some comedy things you laugh it off okay at least half an hour per day i for my according to me and sometimes uh, this actually these are not a problem at all laughing is not a problem at all when we were in hostels we were with friends so because there are some automatic uh, jokes which used to happen and we used to laugh uh, like anything so okay but when you go grow up when you when you are in an working environment when you are in the system you will have a less time to laugh but for me i tell you laugh it off laugh it off go through some comedy videos whatever may be the stressful situation whatever may be the uh, situation whatever may be the thing at least half an hour in a day you laugh it off at least 10 minutes or half an hour you laugh it off okay that will re- relieve your stress yeah again action plan make action plan we'll go go through this in our next um, Uh, next video now uh, so main uh, ultimately in conclusion make a commitment to yourself to change the situation causing you stress seek new and different ways to cope up with the daily stresses and attempt to become more efficient so that you may foresee what stress may arise and possibly avoid or alleviate them stressful situation we all heard of actually again balance is also very important so keep a balance negative and positive things keep a balance of it so oh, that is called as balancing okay balancing should also be there now what is meditation a mental exercise that benefits body process is called as meditation a mental exercise that benefits body process is called meditation very simple way mental exercise that benefits body process is called meditation i repeat so because so many of the people will be calling mailing and telling me meditation what meditation why we have to do meditation meditation no the point which i am speaking about meditation is very clear so mental ex- it is a mental exercise that benefits our body process irrespective of the religion irrespective of their Uh, practicing religion okay so i am basically concentrating on it is a meditation is a mental exercise that benefits body processes meditation is a mental exercise that benefits body processes has a certain physical benefits also traditional grounded in eastern countries like india and tibet popularized in western countries nowadays so it is not a worship or a prayer it is an awareness what is uh, meditate it is an awareness self awareness so you believe it or not simple meditation is watching your own breath watching your own pulses watching your own pulsations is a, is a meditation believe it on really that itself is a meditation 
so watching your breath is a meditation listening to uh, the birds is a meditation listening to the bird sounds is a meditation that's why earlier raja maharajas they used to go to forest just to see the sounds of the birds because that was a meditation for them watching your breath is a meditation watching your pulse is a meditation as long as these activities are free from any other distraction to mind it is an effective meditation believe it or not as long as these activities are free from any other distraction to the mind it is an effective meditation i repeat it is now meditation is not a worship or a prayer it is an awareness watching your own breath is a meditation listening to the bird sounds is a meditation as long as these activities are free from any other distraction to the mind it is an effective meditation mind is free from a uh, free of scattered thoughts scattered thoughts what is meditation a tibetan lama again uh, um <coughs> according to tibetan again uh, they have done some of the uh experiments with the meditation so what are the uh, uses of it and all so we'll discuss in later in the next videos upcoming videos but now you remember it is not a worship or a prayer it is an awareness and listening to your own breath is a meditation okay uh with the regular practice of a balanced series of techniques the energy of the body and mind can be liberated and the quality of consciousness can be expanded see i'm telling you this is very important with the regular practice of balanced series of technique the energy of the body and mind can be liberated and the quality of consciousness can be consciousness can be expanded not a subject claim but is now being investigated by the scientists and being shown by an empirical fact so not a subject claim but is now being investigated by the scientists are being shown by some empirical fact so now remember some with the practice see this meditation is a practice with the practice you can improve the consciousness level that is very important consciousness level so that is very important for the learning students yeah yeah originated asia china again primary purpose i am now uh, very much interested in so meditation decreases heart rate respiratory rate blood pressure oxygen consumption and moreover muscle tension remember it meditation decreases heart rate respiratory rate blood pressure oxygen consumption and muscle tension transcendental meditation again yes again again we will go at in the next class in uh, uh concentrative and mindfulness uh, yes so opening up of attention is very important so attention so what we require in our life is not tension attention attention towards the success and mindfulness is focusing of attention yeah uh so we are discussed physical benefits are there again uh yes it prevents hypertension and all <laughs> yeah behavior effects means it decreased the cigarette smoking and alcohol and even drug abuse meditation has decreased that's why i'm trying to say and um, yes emptying or concentration of mind focusing mindfulness uh, and um, yes what is interpersonal relationship exactly yes leadership according to mr peter de louis list claim is the ability to influence others with or without authority who is a leader who has the ability to influence others he has that because of his um uh, uh, organized way of living he is able to influence the people that's why he is called as a leader all successful endures are the result of human effort thus the ability to influence others is a derivation of interpersonal communication conflict management problem solving interpersonal communication conflict management and problem solving so interpersonal effectiveness interpersonal effectiveness is the capability of the individual to do this influence others come uh, com competently 
so leadership is a direct function of three elements that is awareness ability commitment i remember a a c that is awareness ability and commitment leaders is the direct function of three elements of interpersonal effectiveness that is awareness ability commitment so you should aware of the situation ability he is capable committed to the group that is also very important yes that is also very important awareness is a state of consciousness it's the ability to recognize yourself others events situation in a real time what exactly is the situation you should aware of it it is the ability to assess the impact of actions on situations others and be critically self reflective it is the development process that as a function of experience communication self discovery and feedback ability ability to learn or understand technical uh, issues is the basis of our careers ability to lead to a function functions of influence that ability to communicate ability to resolve conflicts ability to solve problems and make decisions so these are the three things which you have to remember communicate resolve conflicts solve problems as a member of team we influence others in a collaborative effort to find better ideas or solve the problems so ability to communicate ability to resolve conflicts ability to solve problems and make decisions so awareness you should aware of the situation what exactly is happening ability he is able to communicate resolve the conflicts and solve the problems what are the problem is there you should solve it and make a decisions so decision making that is synergistic decision making commitment for leaders the one thing that leads to maturity is full fully aware recognition that one's decision make a difference both positively and negatively in the lives of others and that any attempt to solve problem might have a decided negative impact on some while helping others so no win uh, scenario one uh, so in uh, is all no win scenario one must still make the hard decision so it is commitment basically you should not that uh, his decision should not trouble anyone that's what they're trying to say oh so commitment so you can see example for the movie commitment is untouchable uh, moment, uh, moment of the truth uh, for uh, eloquentness jimmy always asks what you are prepared to do ness replies anything i have to do to make this thing right everyone knows where the problems are but no one is willing to do anything you said you do you would do anything you had to to make it right now i am willing to help you you made the commitment yes leadership is the ability to develop vision that motivates others to move with a passion towards a com- towards a common goal so actually leadership is ability to develop a vision that motivates others to move with a passion towards a common goal that motivates others to move with a passion towards a common goal management is ability to uh, organize resources coordinate the execution of uh, tasks necessary to reach the goal in timely and cost effective manner so again we'll go with this um, see the leadership i'm telling you <laughs> the way we stand we sit it is called as body language the way you dress the way you write so again again all the all uh, teachers you want a leader is interpersonal communication so it's a very important thing what interpersonal communication skills uh yes there are two things which you have to remember that is extrovert and introvert personality indicators that two personality indicators that is called as extrovert and introvert so intro extrovert are type e they are sociable about 75% of the people are extroverts they expends energy interacts with others freely these extroverts they expends energy and they in- interact with everyone freely extroverts introverts if they are type 1 they are territorial about 25% of the people are introverts they conserve energy reads mediates and solve problems the read mediate 
and even solve the problems those who are introverts and the introverts are the effective leaders extrovert expressive simple in other way expo extroverts are very much expressive introverts are less expressive and they do the things rather than speaking actions they believe in action so they are the good leaders again building a team that we'll discuss later yeah when it comes to conflict um, you have the conflict management and resolution cycle is there we'll discuss conflict management cycle and but uh, there are five conflict handling modes you should remember that is competing i will uh, there are conflicts between a and b i will be competing with them in a healthy way that is one of the mode to handle conflict collaborating so no we will we'll read together we we'll learn together collaborating compromising no you read more you take first position um, second position is enough for me that is compromising and avoiding avoiding these are dangerous avoiding and accommodating so these are very dangerous see avoiding we avoid some of the situations sometimes it is good sometimes it is very dangerous avoiding accommodating accommodating s yes. and again accommodating means you you are moving forward but at least you make him accommodate in the second position that is accommodating and the last one is dominating so i will repeat there are five conflict handling modes according to mr thomas kilman conflict styles one is competing i will compete with him collaborate with him compromise with him avoid with him avoiding and accommodating and the last one is dominating so we all know what are the good leaders are so influence they influence and command the people guiding the people again leadership by position personality charisma moral example power held intellectual leaders yes motivation again i have received so many i um, mean uh, queries regarding motivation the intensity of a person's desire to engage in an activity is motivation the intensity of a person's desire to engage in an activity is motivation the intensity with which the person's desire to engage in an activity for example teaching i have a motivation for teaching that is motivation okay so individual differences the main approach is motivation need based approach process based approach and learning and reinforcement based approach again there are there, there are three approaches are there we'll discuss in the next videos but but for time being motivation is the intensity of a person's desire to engage in an activity intensity of a person's desire to engage in an activity yes that is also very important reinforcement emotional intelligence the assortment of non cognitive skills capabilities competencies that influence a person's ability to cope up with environmental demands and pressures so emo emotional intelligence is much needed for the leaders an assortment of non cognizable skills capabilities and competencies that influence a person's ability to cope up with environmental needs and demands and pressures dimensions of emotional intelligence self awareness of own feelings self management of own emotions self motivation in face of setbacks empathy of others feelings social skills to handle other situation remember emotional intelligence is much needed for leaders see self awareness of own feelings i should aware of my feelings self management of own emotions my emotions i should manage self motivation in the face of setbacks leaders should have a whatever may be the situation leaders should have a self motivation in the face of setbacks empathy for others feeling social skills to handle others emotions that is also important social skills to handle others emotions okay there is a emotional intelligence this is much stated i repeat emotional intelligence is self awareness of own feelings self management of own emotions self motivation in the face of setbacks empathy of other things i mean others feelings and social skills to handle others emotions so here very simple emotional intelligence our feelings our emotions others feeling others emotions and whatever with the situation you should have a motivating face so that just everything will discuss uh, motivational theories are there again maslow's hierarchy theory 
Mr. Ald uh, Adafler's ERG theory, Mr. Heisberg's uh, Herberg's theory, and um, MacLeod's uh, learning theory. Again, there are so, no, so many theories of motiv motivation. That's uh, again a very big thing to discuss. We'll go in detail one by one in the next videos, upcoming videos. Yes, in the behavior, I'm mainly interested in telling you about how to stage a person at this situation. Yes. How to stage a person? Okay, behavior, see, want, there are again health belief model, there are some other models are there in behavior changing. Okay. Uh, yes. How to stage a person? So, for example, we take some scenario like exercise. A young person is there, and he is doing exercise regularly. Okay. Do you exercise regularly? First question I am asking. He says no. Do you intend to, intend to do in the next 30? days no do you intend to do in the next six months no so he is in the stage of pre-contemplation he is in the stage of pre-contemplation so first stage so do you intend to do in the next uh, six months if you say x yes yes then he is in the contemplation stage if you intend to do in the next 30 days then in the preparation stage if he intend to so then he's doing regularly have you been doing uh, in uh, so far more than six months yes then he's in action stage if he says is not doing since six months then he's in action stage if he says yes he is doing for six months since six months then he is in the maintenance stage very simple there are five stages to stage a person which stage is exactly in Okay, I'll I'm taking the scenario of exercise, doing exercise regularly. Very simple. Staging a person is very very important. So this is very helpful in taking you you how to which people you have to mingle, how to ma manage your frequencies. So that is very important. So staging a person is very very important. So I'm taking the scenario of do you exercise regularly? Very simple question. Do you exercise regularly? If he says yes. Yes, you are doing it since six months. Yes, then he is in the maintenance stage. No, I am not doing it since six months, but I am doing the regular exercises. But uh, I am doing the exercises. So, he is in the action stage. No, I am not doing the exercises regularly. But you do intend to do it in the next 30, one month, 30 days or one month? Yes, then he is in the preparation stage. No, I'm not doing since 30 days and, and I'm not able to do it in the next 30 days, but I'm, not, I'm, I'm able to do it in the next, um, next um, six months. Then he's in the contemplation stage. No, I'm not able to do it in the next six months also. Then he's in the pre-contemplation stage. I repeat, this is very much needed. So how to stage a person? I'm taking the scenario of exercises, regular, doing the exercises regularly. First, I ask the question, do you exercise regularly? If he says yes, Yes, you are doing it since uh, six months. Yes, then he's in the maintenance stage. No, I'm not doing it since six months. Then he's in the action stage. No, I'm not doing the exercises regularly, but I'm able to do it in the next 30 days. Then he's in the preparation stage. No, I'm not able to do it in the next 30 days, but I'm able to do it in the next six months. Then he's in the contemplation stage. No, still I'm not able to do it in the next uh, six months. Then he's in the pre-contemplation stage again I just have taken the scenario of doing the re exercises regularly again you can apply it for any of the work for the employee that is a uh, this one okay precaution adoption process model so Neil with uh, Winston precaution adoption process model again um, again these are very big things uh, we'll discuss in the next upcoming videos precaution adoption process model yes again the social cognitive theory is social change model yes now I am uh, motivation yes motive in the motivation itself there are extrinsic and instruction int intrinsic motivators uh, yes yes for the students it is much needed so Extensive motivation is a motivation to perform and succeed for the sake of accomplishment of accomplishing a specific result or an outcome. External motivation comes from the influences outside of the individual. Common extensive motivators are rewards and the treat uh, and the treat of punishment. 
Thus, extrinsically motivated learners may have to be interested uh, or uh, prudent may process information only superficially and are often interested in performing only uh, easy tasks and meeting minimal classroom requirements. However, extrinsic motivation is equally necessary. Performance goals, learning goals. Motivation directs behavior towards a particular goal. Social cognitive theorists propose that individuals set goals for themselves and direct their behavior accordingly. That means, in, um, in the, by birth only, I decided I will become the doctor. So, I will do the things what I have, are possible for me to becoming a doctor. That itself is a set cog social cognitive uh, theory and motivation determines the specific goal toward which learners strive. Thus, it affects the choices of students to make. Motivation uh, leads to increased effort and energy. Motivation increases initiation and persistence in activities. <coughs> motivation af um, affects cognitive processes. Motivation determines which consequences are reinforcing and punishing. Motivation often enhances performance. So again, there are again role models. Okay, you can think of role models. They will again increase the motivation. So when it comes to student, how to motivate them? Uh, yes, make it real. In order to foster intrinsic motivation, try to create learning activity based on the topics to be taught. Learning should be practical. Provide choices. Students can be um, increased motivation uh, when they feel some sense of uh, autonomy in uh, learning process and motivation declines. Um, when students have no voice in the class structure. Let the student uh, write review question for the lesson. Have them uh, write an action plan before the beginning of the project. Fine tune the challenge. Encourage the student to beat their personal best. Okay, encourage. So what uh, in the first standard he has uh, achieved some about 93%. He has to beat in the second standard you have to take 94 percent that is beat the personal best seek role models again role models uh, for example for the person who is starting the cricket Sachin Tendulkar is the role model and uh, for the person who is uh, seeking his career in acting Mr. Akshay Kumar is the role model according to me and likewise in those uh, those fields where you seek of the role models so that you can have a motivation to learn and to achieve at least if you are not able to achieve it at least you will learn something and at least you will improvise something a establish a sense of belonging effective teaching that is also very important adopt a supportive style uh, supportive teaching style uh, that allows to students to attorney and uh, foster increased student interest enjoyment engagement and performance and um, supportive teacher behaviors include listening, giving hints, encouragement, being responsive to students' questions, showing empathy for students, nurturing self-worth, a sense of competence and attorney. The role of expectation, it is, uh, yes, you expect from the students. You tell that this time, this class, I'm expecting at least five distinctions from the students. That is role of expectation. That itself will be a motivation. So that expectation should preachers should also expect from the students in the performance level okay this time this class is very nice and at least i have this from this batch and this year i am expecting at least 10 distinction next year at least 20 distinction likewise you should expect strategize with struggling students against struggling, uh, when uh, the students are struggling with poor academic performance low self-efficacy or low motivation one strategy that may help to uh, teach them uh, is how to learn outline specific strategies for compl uh, completing an, an assignment note taking reviewing for an exam dealing with failure again teach, uh, teach students to concentrate on the task rather than the distracted by fear of failure failure uh, is the result of lack of information no, are not using the appreciate problem, solving skill, or not lack of ability. 
assist students to retrace their steps to solve problems so they won't be distracted by frustration so failing failure dealing with the and last very important point is arcs model so arcs model is a very important model of motivation i remember it arcs model okay uh, this model really captures the teacher's role in motivation that is attention a stands for attention capturing students interest and curiosity relevance meeting the students personal needs and goals confidence arcs c stands for confidence helping the students believe that they will be succeed uh, they will succeed and satisfaction reinforcing the students accomplishments through the extrinsic and intrinsic rewards accomplishments through the extrinsic and intrinsic rewards very simple arcs models there are three mo models which is a very important model of motivation this model really captures the teacher's role in motivation that is attention relevance confidence satisfaction attention relevance confidence satisfaction attention relevance confidence satisfaction attention relevance confidence satisfaction okay that is very important i repeat attention relevance confidence satisfaction action so attention capturing the students interest and curiosity relevance meeting the students personal needs and goals confidence helping the students to believe that they will succeed satisfaction reinforcing students accomplishments through the extrinsic and intrinsic rewards so next is a uh, self management that mainly is time management okay so time management again uh self assessment goal setting Yes, smart goal setting. There are again goal setting, smart goal setting. So the smart goal setting stands for specific, measurable, action, realistic, time based. Smart goal setting. Whenever you are setting the goals, it should be specific, measurable, action, realistic, time based. Specific, measurable, action, realistic, time based. Specific, measurable, action, realistic, time based. I repeat. specific measurable action realistic time based goal should be set okay goal setting specific measurable action realistic time based so time management strategies we all know that there is a four quadrant theory in that it states that high urgency low urgency high importance and low importance again this will be discussed in next uh, video so basically in time management strategy you have to prioritize uh, prioritize your tasks specific uh, specify them and again you have to uh do wait one by one by scheduling proper scheduling is also important and uh, uh, keep a diary uh, and yes i already to 80 by 20 rule that is uh, doing 80% of work and getting 20% result and doing 20% of work and getting 80% result and this very important thing procrastination is to delay needlessly something that we believe would be uh, to our benefit we believe that it is to our benefit but is not for our benefit it is to delay needlessly something that we believe would be to our benefit oh procrastination again uh, it is just uh, wasting the over time okay so causes uh, overcoming post take action and uh, what's the first okay make commitments and um, yeah making sense of a mess that is also very important make it simple if it is complicated you won't use it aim to be able to file it quickly and find it quickly use box files and magazines use the document folders organize your mind so that can be done by positive attitude positive language self efficacy and goals and wants plan monitor evaluate how you manage yourself and your time set and achieve smart goals use the time management system and effective mass strategies get things started and finished beat procrastination maintain balance sharpen the saw renew yourself regularly that's what i told you uh, emptying your mind put the first things first prioritize and do the most important things first begin with the end in the mind control your own destiny define your missions and goals in life change is universal change is permanent be ever willing to change for change alone needs you to success and happiness so 80 by 80 by 20 rule we all know parrot's principle 
80% work gives 20% result, 20% work gives 80% result. So 1 uh, rupees 500 is equal to 100 rupees of 5. Uh, five. Effective versus efficient, smart work versus hard work. That's what they're trying to say. And performance, when it goes to performance, <coughs> Again, uh, performance, uh, there are again um, so many things that we'll discuss in the next upcoming videos. Yes, performance, tangential re returns, yes. Set of mechanism for dis uh, distributing uh, tangible returns, intangible and relations uh, relational returns. Okay, so tangible returns is cash compensation, base pay, cost of living, uh, continent pay, incentives. Those are all tangible returns. There is the reward system. We are now talking about reward systems. So reward system means set of mechanism for distributing tangible returns and intangible or relational returns. This is a part of employment relationship. For the employee we are doing cash compensation. We give you do this work, I give this much amount of cash. That is cash, tangible, they are all tangible returns base pay, cost of living, contingent, contingent pay, incentives, short and long incentives, tangible returns again we have benefits such as income protection, allowances, work of life focus. Intangible returns we have uh, relational returns such as recognition and status, employment security, challenging work, learning, learning opportunities, cost of living, income protection, so these are all work and life focus, allowances, relationship returns, base pay. Okay, these are all tangible returns. For strategic, administrative, informational, developmental, organization, maintenance, documental. Okay, what should be the performance management? We will discuss the, actually in the next upcoming videos. Now I am now, uh, yes, what is a communication? Communication is the process by which information is exchanged and understood by two or more people, usually with the intent to motivate or influence behavior. Communication is defined as the process by which information is exchanged and understood by two or more people, usually with the intent to motivate or influence behavior. Very simple, I repeat, communication is defined as the process by which information is exchanged and understood by two or more people, usually with the intent to motivate or influence behavior. Okay, that is where communication is very important. So again, uh, in uh, communication, we have types, ability to handle multiple cues simultaneously, ability to facilitate rapid two-way feedback, ability to establish personal focus for the communication. Again, there are non-verbal com communication that means message sent through the human actions, behavior rather than through words. Most non-verbal communications is unconscious or subconscious and occurs mostly face to face. And these factors in message interpretation and verbal impact is very less. Vocal impact is very less. Facial impact will be more. See, verbal impact 7%, vocal impact 38%. Facial impact is 55% in non-verbal communication and then we have verbal communication verbal communication yeah that's also very important verbal means like uh, we're giving uh, the papers whatever like you give some orders through the papers those are all by speaking those are all verbal communications okay non-verbal is uh, that one okay and upward and downward communication downward from the uh, administrator to the employee message sent from the top management to the down subordinates is a downward communication most familiar and obvious flow of formal communication major problems is drop off another concern is distortion okay it will be changed whatever they are sent that won't be uh, seen it will be seen in a different way and upward communication we have messages that flow from the lower to the higher officials in the organization and upward communication mechanisms is usually suggestion boxes, employee surveys, uh, MIS reports, face-to-face -face conversation. Basically, face-to-face non-verbal conversation is the upward communication. And horizontal communication or lateral or diagonal exchange of message among the co-workers is horizontal. So, downward, upward, horizontal is among the co-workers okay that is also you have to remember horizontal communication is of uh, three types intra-departmental inter-departmental change initiatives and improvements okay change initiatives and improvements we'll discuss later in detail in the upcoming videos but for time being 
communication barriers i have to remember interpersonal dynamics channels and media defense mechanisms uh, semantics and inconsistent cues the role personal behavior uh, communication behavior problems barriers communication barriers and status and power differences departmental needs and goals lack of formal channels communication network unsuited to task <coughs> poor coordination so this can individual barriers can be overcome by active listening selection of uh, appropriate channel and knowledge of others perspective uh, and uh, climate of trust and dialogue development uh, and use of formal channels and encourage of multiple channels and formal informal changing organization or group structure to fit communication needs feedback and learning types of communication we are list discussed verbal and non verbal oral written electronic video whatever is there is all verbal communication non verbal is by eye movements gestures facial expressions remember there are two types of communication verbal communication non verbal communication verbal means oral written electronic or video non verbal communication is through the eye movements gestures facial expressions non verbal communication is eye movements gestures facial expression is non verbal communication verbal communication is through the oral written and electronic or video i repeat types of communication verbal non verbal verbal means oral written electronic or video non verbal means eyes move eye movements gestures and facial expressions so verbal is better for the administrator non verbal is better for the employees so again oral communication again we'll discuss everything later in the upcoming videos and uh, yes organizational communication is always so emotional expression innovation and persuasion affecting the behavior of others often on the focus of the Im uh, improvement in communication skills and related to the managements listening is a uh, different from uh, hearing so you always remember hearing is different listening is different hearing is a psychology process of detecting or processing sounds is a hearing is a physiological sorry in hearing is a physiological process of detecting and processing sounds listening is a mental process of assigning meaning to the sounds see i am listening is a mental process of assigning meaning to the sounds that is listening hearing is just detecting the sounds and processing the sounds remember there are differences between hearing and listening so listening means is just detecting the sounds and processing the sounds is hearing listening is assigning mental uh, meaning to the sound assigning mental meaning to the sound if, for example if there is some sound like <coughs> we think it can be of a frog it can be of any other animal that is listening okay communication process we it is a primary skill for success and people spend about 20% of their time listening so listen assigning mental assigning meaning to the sounds mental assigning seeing meaning to the sound is listening remember hearing is just detecting and processing of sound listening is mental assigning meaning to the sound so interpersonal and interpersonal activities so always listening is very important so that means when you are listening to your friends or family or any other person or employee what is actually intended if you if you are a good listener you uh, if you interpret in a that way that will be helpful for you and for the employee and for the institution so active listening listener is responsible for completeness of a speaker's message listener's role is not passive absorbing spoken message deriving meaning from it accurately uh, hear facts in message understand the speaker's feeling about message they effort to understand a message from speaker's viewpoint meaning of message includes both content and speaker's feelings listeners attends to all verbal and non verbal cues listener may ask questions for clarification listener may uh, rephrase speaker's message okay listening is very important so again ethical issues in organization communication so internal external so newsletters satellite television broadcast direct mailing bulletin okay, again there are some other issues also there that will be discussing in the next upcoming classes now we should learn about what is a conflict conflict is opposition incompatible behavior antagonist interaction block another party from reaching her or his goals so very simple remember conflict is opposition 
incompatible behavior, antagonistic interaction, block another party from reaching her or his goals. So there are five, four important points to explain conflict. So we always think, well, if the conflict is there, beating is a conflict. No, according to the management rules, according to the working rules, according to the administrative rules, conflict is opposition, incompatible behavior, antagonistic interaction, block another party from reaching her or his goals. Opposition, incompatible behavior, antagonistic interaction, black another party from reaching her or his goals. I repeat, opposition, incompatible behavior, antagonistic interaction, block another person from reaching her or his goals. So conflict is opposition, incompatible behavior, antagonistic interaction, block another person from reaching her or his goals. I repeat last time, the so conflict is opposition, antagonistic interaction, incompatible behavior, block another person from reaching his or her goal. Opposition, incompatible behavior, antagonistic interaction, block another person from reaching his or her goals. So that is very important complete, okay? Uh, disagreement, debates, disputes, again, what are the types of conflict? Functional and dysfunctional. There are two types, functional and dysfunctional conflict. Functional conflict is works towards the goals of an organization or a group. Dysfunctional conflict is blocks an organization or a group from reaching its goals. Dysfunctional high conflict, what uh, you typically think about the conflict. Dysfunctional low conflict, uh, an atypical wave levels vary <coughs> among the groups. So constructive conflict. So always functional conflict is a constructive conflict. So it increases the information, ideas. It increases information and ideas. For example, two persons A and B, both the postgraduate students, they are there. And if they have a functional conflict, and one person reads one book, uh, for example, Guyton, another person reads David Sun. So again, they have a comp competition in conflict in a co functional way. That means uh, one is reading more than the other. That is the conflict level. So that if it, if it will be helpful for everyone, which increases the information and ideas for everyone. That is called as functional conflict. Encourages innovative uh, thinking. This encourages again. Oh, he is thinking in that way. Yes, I can. I will think again still more. That is encourages innovative thinking. Unshakes, unshakes different points of view. Reduces stagnation. See, always you should. It's that reduces stagnation only thing is functional conflict reduces stagnation <coughs> functional and dysfunctional conflict so dysfunction is a high conflict so here you will have a tension anxiety and even stress drives out low conflict tolerant people reduced trust poor decision because of the withheld or disordered uh, information excessive management focus on the conflict so dysfunctional conflict is dangerous and even it is dangerous for the institution itself so you should manage it again high conflict low conflict is there we'll discuss later so levels of conflict see organizational group and individual okay so uh, levels of conflict organization within uh, between two organizations so between um, for example between two organization in the same uh, place that is organization group conflict within between the two groups of the departments and individual within the uh, same individuals of the same department. I mean between the two individuals of the same department. So levels of conflict, individual, group, organization. Individual between the two individuals of the same department, group between the two departments, organizational between the two organizations. So inter-organization again, intra-group, intra-group conflict, uh, inter-group, intra-organization. Again, there are stages. That cannot be explained now, but it can be explained in upcoming videos. But uh, for the uh, time being, to make yourself uh, oriented towards the personality development system, I have uh, done this much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. I don't know to what extent I have reached and what extent I am able to communicate. But this is my first effort to reach the people regarding the personality development system. Believe it, this is just a beginning. This is just a beginning. In the upcoming videos, you'll definitely see more things and which will be more informative, 
with the more charts and i am i am able to do uh, something better than this also in the upcoming videos thank you thank you very much thank you all and keep supporting myself dr tipper udras for me uh, from the department of microbiology shivamogga institute of medical science shivamogga karnataka india i have done mbbs from bangalore medical college md from karnataka institute of medical science um, hubli now i'm working in shivamogga institute of medical science thank you all thanks for your support jaganesh jai shri ram